Well, hello. Uh, this is a quick tutorial on how to use the curved lithophane design tool. And here you can see the curved lithophane design tool at lithophanemaker.com. I'll go through it quickly and then I'll go through it in more detail if you want to see all that detail and know what all of these different uh, values are for. So quickly, uh, you simply upload your image and then you hit the run button, you know, create STL, and this will take a minute. And during that minute, you can, uh, 34 seconds to be exact, uh, you can consider becoming a patron. Uh, there are a couple different options. There's the Benchy option, tugboat, uh, battle Benchy, and aircraft carrier Benchy options. Or for free, you could go to my Thingiverse page and just like the designs there, which would give greater visibility to these designs on Thingiverse and help other people find uh, my lithophane design tool. You can also follow me or tip me. Um, so it, it has completed, and you just hit save, and now you open it up. This is a uh, tag lithophane, but here's the curved lithophane I just made. And here it is. So uh, you know you can you can change aspects of this uh, if you want to, which I will now go into. Um, if you wanted to make it so that this was completely circular, then you would simply go here and change this angle here to 360 and watch when you change this. It changes the appearance under your design. So that's that's one option. I'm going to start from the top and work my way down, though. Um, this lithophane resolution number gives you the distance uh, between points on the lithophane surface. So the length of the legs of the right triangles that this whole thing is made up of. So if you zoom in here and you make it so that you can see the triangles. You know, you see this whole thing's just made up of a bunch of triangles that define the surface of the lithophane. And if you measure the distance between points, if I could measure, <laughs> oh there we go, if I, if I had measured perfectly it would say 0.3, but it says 0.33 because I, you know, misclicked by 30 microns. So, um, you can see that's about 0.3. So that's what the lithophane resolution does. Therefore, a smaller lithophane resolution makes it so that there are more points, which increases the size of the file and the runtime because you have, um, you know, you have to calculate all those points, you have to save all those points. And then the height of the lithophane is the main sizing dimension. So if you make this 100, you can see how things change. Um, it's all scaled, so the other features become relatively larger. So when I make this height larger again, the features will become relatively smaller. And that's the main sizing feature. Um, the angle I just went through, the base width is this value right here as shown in the, the schematic. So if I were to make this value larger, then this uh, base width becomes larger. The base height is likewise defined in the schematic. Here it is. Um, it's this top and the bottom. And so now we've made this absurdly large frame that no one would ever want, but it is possible to make that. Um, so maybe we'll just, I'll just take it back to 10. Five is fine, whatever. So now this ledge angle is this angle right here. So it becomes your overhang angle on the top side when you're printing. And I'm comfortable with the ledge angle of 60 and I think I would still get quality results. So you can see this overhang became steeper and you can make this whatever you want it to be and uh, prevent your your lithophane from having uh, to have supports which would just be silly 
and unnecessary. So um, the thicknesses, the maximum and the minimum thicknesses are the maximum and minimum thicknesses on the lithophane surface and you want to use these values to control the brightness and the contrast of your lithophane. Then you have the estimated runtime, which is just bonkers right now because I made the lithophane resolution very fine. Click right. 0.3. And now it's more reasonable. Also, I have a server that is en route to my house, I think, or it's being QC'd or something. Whatever they're doing, it hasn't arrived yet, but I'm going to get the server, and that should be about 25 times faster than the current server I have, so this will go down. Then here's the file size, which might be relevant to you if you have a software program that can't handle large files, uh, like I think Cura doesn't handle large files as well as some other slicers. So you don't want that number to become gigantic, because if it becomes really big, then it'll lag up Cura or some other program that you may have. And then here are some quick verbal instructions. You can see uh, that I didn't put much into that, but um, you have this video now, so you don't really need that anyways, right? Um, and I th that's, that's basically everything. So... Again, um, help is appreciated. I am a hobbyist 3D printer and a hobbyist coder, but um, it'd be great if this weren't, or this were at least cash neutral. And like I said, I just bought a server, and I have not received money for that server. <laughs> so uh, I've just I've just seen a lot of uh, use out of this from people. So people like it. So I think it's worth uh, you know putting money into. So so. Here are the options for giving money back where you could tip me, but also there's the free option of just coming here and liking my designs because when you like the designs, they go higher uh, on the search results on Thingiverse, and then other people can find these designs better, and it grows, and uh, maybe they'll be a patron if you're not. So I appreciate your time, and I hope that you found this tutorial useful and that you find the um, lithophane maker useful. So again, that's lithophanemaker.com and you have a good one.